remember that when we were finding a centroid, to find x-bar we usually used a vertical rectangle because that gave us a dx that we could integrate. And when we found y-bar, we usually used a horizontal element because that gave us a dy, which made it easy to integrate. When we did y, the example y equals x squared with the vertical rectangle here, dA was the height, base times height, x squared times dx, and dA over here was 6 minus x times dy. We had to then solve this x to get it in terms of y so that you had root y and dy, and you could plug that in and you got x bar and y bar. When we came to integrating y equals x cubed plus x, we wanted to use the same vertical element for both finding x bar and y bar because we didn't want to solve. So when we do that, we have to make sure that we're integrating x el and y el. Now the x coordinate does not change. The y coordinate will be the centroid of the differential area, which is the dot halfway up, and you get y over 2, and you can integrate. So that's what we did with centroids. Now we want to talk about moments of inertia. Moments of inertia have the same basic problem. I, y is the integral of x squared dA, and Ix is the integral of y squared dA. If you can find dA in terms of dx and dy, then you're in good shape. But if we're looking at something that looks like x cubed plus x, and we want to find the centroid of this shape, we're not going to be able to necessarily solve and take these integrals easily. So we want to know how do these integrals change if we're going to use a horizontal differential element for iy or conversely a vertical element for ix. So let's look at what we already know. We can find a dx and dy and then take a double integral in both cases. So that looks like dA is dx dy. Okay, that's well and good. But really we like not doing it that way because you still have to solve in one case or the other. So if you have a horizontal stripe, then your dA is a minus x dy, and we know that we could find this particular one by solving. So we have y squared dA. We have a dA that's in terms of dy. And as long as we can solve right here, we're in good shape. Ditto for here. If dA is y dx, this is fine. We can substitute that in, and we're going to get x uh, y dx. As long as you can solve for y in terms of x, you're in good shape. But in both of these cases, both here and here, I'm going to need to be able to solve. One way or the other, you probably know but you may not know them both. So what happens if you want to look at what goes in those blue blanks? Now, the principle here is, is the same. Just like you can write a is the integral of dA, then I can say ix is the integral of dix. dix is, by definition, the moment of inertia of the rectangle of my differential area. So here's my rectangle. What is the moment of inertia of that rectangle? Well, the moment of inertia of any rectangle is 112 bh cubed plus 80 squared. That's, we already figured that out. So if we're looking at dix for this particular rectangle, I know that my h and my d have to be the, the ones that are perpendicular to the x-axis. So if I plug these in, my width of this rectangle is dx, my height is y, a is just y dx, we already know that, and the d squared what is the distance between the centroid of this shape and this axis? Well, that's going to be y over 2. So d squared is y over 2 squared. And if you work that out, what you end up with is dix is 1 third y cubed dx. That works as long as your rectangle is sitting on the, x, the y axis. If you have some sort of vertical rectangle where it's not sitting on the x axis, then you have to actually figure this out from scratch because that will be your D. Same thing with the other way around. If you're looking at a horizontal element, DIY is still the moment of inertia of your differential area. So in this case my rectangle still has a moment of inertia of 112 bh cubed plus 80 squared and now I'm going to have D and H being perpendicular to Y. So my base is DY 
this distance is a minus x cubed over 12. And now you've got a little bit more complicated mess because the air, you've got all these a minus x's. So this is your area. Your distance between the axis and the centroid of your shape is a minus a over 2 minus x over 2 plus x. So if you, you can figure out that this distance right here corresponds to that distance. And if you work all of that out, what you end up with is this formula. Now this is not a formula that you want to memorize because you may, may or may not have this kind of shape. The basic principle here is still the same. It's up here. You can integrate any of these as by adding up, using your integral, the moment of inertia of your individual differential areas. So let's look at those two formulas that we just found for this example that we had a minute ago. IY is the integral of x squared dA. That one is the one that works. dA is just simply my height times dx. Sorry about that. dx. And I know where that what, what y is it's given to me. So as I can plug that in, I can calculate that integral easily. Here I know that I can use this formula for dA still, and I can use this formula because my, act, my differential area is sitting on the axis. So that's the one we actually calculated before, and you can plug that in and solve there.